Hey guys, this is Jimmy from Jimmy's DIY. Today I'm going to do a video on Octoprint. Uh, the video is a request by multiple users on the Discord, so let's dive right in um, with the questions. What is an Octoprint? Octoprint is a Python-based application that is developed by Gina Hoisk. Uh, Octoprint allows you to control um, your basically Marlin-based 3D printer over the web interface. Um, do I need one? Not necessarily, but if you want to take your 3D printing to the next level, I would definitely recommend getting uh, Octoprint set up. Uh, it does allow you to send G-code commands over the terminal interface that it has built in. Um, also allows you to install third-party plugins, which can improve and enhance your printing experience. Uh, what devices it's compatible with? Um, that's another question that's asked. So it's compatible with Windows, Linux-based OS. Uh, for Windows, you need Python setup, Linux, um, I'm not sure I never set it up, and uh, Raspberry Pi, Android OS. Uh, sorry for the iOS users, it's not, uh, you can't set it up. Um, for Android, you have to have Android 9.0 or Android Pi uh, in order for you to install the uh, Octo 4a application. And then the setup is very simple from there. Um, and today's basically, I'm going to cover the installation over Raspberry Pi, which I recently purchased. Um, I got the Raspberry Pi 4, two gigabyte one. Um, now you can use OctoPi on Raspberry Pi 3B with 512 megabyte, um, Raspberry Pi 4, uh, uh Raspberry Pi, uh, 2W, um, zero. That's the zero, the uh, second generation that is capable of but you cannot use 1080p on that uh, uh i've been using raspberry pi 4 on my other printer um, with 1080p camera and i have no uh, hesitations with it so let's dive right in and i'll walk you through the process of uh, installation setting up basically your uh, octopi with your printer uh, for today's project basically you're going to need a micro sd card um, Raspberry Pi imager, you're going to need a micro SD card reader and a cup of coffee. All right, guys, um, <clears throat> now we're moving forward to do the installation of Octopi or Octoprint. First thing you want to do is go to octoprint.org and then followed by you going to click on download, which is down below in the green. So you click this and then you're going to be landing, um, on our next page. On this page, you're going to scroll down in the middle where it says installing Octopi. There's a link for a Raspberry Pi imager. Um, and it also have all the uh, instructions on how to move forward. But um, click on the uh, Raspberry Pi imager. Um, then you're going to go to raspberrypi.com. Um, and if you're a seasoned person, you can actually go straight down to raspberrypi.com and download the uh, installer. Um, I have Windows, so I'm going to download for Windows. If you have Mac, you download according to your respective OS. So click on this and then it's going to uh, ask you to save. So I already downloaded it on my desktop and I have it installed. Um, this is right here. Um, I have it already installed, so um, I'm going to launch it up. It's a fairly simple utility. Um, <clears throat> And at this point, you also want to have your uh, micro SD card inserted into your computer, whether you have a built-in reader or you want to use the USB that's up to, uh, that's according to your device. Uh, at this screen here, you're going to click on Choose OS. Once you do that, you're going to go through this pop-up. You go to Other Pacific uh, Purpose OSs, and then you're going to click on 3D Printing. After that, you're going to go Octopi and Stable Release. Then you choose your storage. After that, you're going to click on this gear Don't before you click right. Once you, once you do that, um, you want to set post name. I'm going to, for the demo purpose, I'm going to just put uh, Jimmy's DIY. Um, and then you also want to enable SSH just in case you need to uh, do transfers or something like that. I usually have it enabled. Please don't change username pi because it'll create some issues. So you could change the password. Uh, and then if you are connecting with LAN, local area network over the Wi-Fi, 
you're gonna click on configure wireless LAN. You put in your SSID. Um, I don't care if you see my SSID at this point. Um, and then um, it is normal for this application to pick up your Wi-Fi password from your computer. Uh, if it's not there, just enter it. Uh, I'm just going to re-enter. And then you're going to go down and make sure your wireless LAN country is selected appropriately. I'm in US, so I'm going to set that. And then you hit save. And then you're going to click right. And at this point, you want to sit back and uh, just select yes. And then at this point, just sit back and relax for a good five, 10 minutes or take a break um, or sip on a coffee, whatever you want to do. All right, guys, this is at verifying stage. So uh, it's going to finish its verifying files and then it's going to uh, pop up. So we're just waiting here. All right, so if you can see here, uh, it just finished and now it ejected my memory card as well. But uh, go ahead and click continue and then you're going to reinsert the memory card into your, take it out and reinsert it or remount it. Um, and then uh, you're going to see this boot partition popping up. Um, the first thing you wanna make sure in here is you have um, your Octopi network and WPA supplicant file in there. So I am going to open this real quick, uh, check. Um, uh, I'm going to make sure that there is my Wi-Fi settings. A lot of the time the Wi-Fi settings don't get stored using the application. Call my luck um, afterwards. So uh, let me pause it real quick here and verify. Of course, uh, this one did not update. So let's do this. Um, if you have WPA or WEP, you're gonna basically uncomment the uh, network section right here. And then SSID, PSK. So you just wanna uncomment this and I'm going to obviously enter my SSID here. Let me just double check. And I need to put my password in here. And so I need to put my password here where it says put password and then you save the file. All right. And then you want to make sure there is an SSH file in here. So I don't see, uh, I do see SSH file, so we're good with that. So at this point, you're going to, uh, all right, close this and eject your memory card. And you're going to head down to your Raspberry Pi. You're going to insert the memory card. And uh, keep your computer next to you uh, because we, uh, we need to wait about three to five minutes where um, SD card is basically read by Raspberry Pi and it initialized the OS and it has to go through re, uh, basically restructuring the file system and also expanding the file system. Um, so give, give it a few seconds. I'm, I'm going to insert this into Raspberry Pi now. All right, so I just typed in uh, Jimmy's DIY .local. Uh It's been a good five minutes um, and I got the screen. So I'm going to basically click on advance and proceed to Jimmy's DIY.local. Let's see if it works. Um, there we go. It's launching up Octoprint and this is your setup wizard. So first screen, uh, you're going to click next and restore backup if you have any. Um, I'm assuming you're doing fresh, so you don't have anything. You click on next access control. This is, we're just doing a test. So I'll just do test user uh, password is test test so and you create an account and it's going to give you a prompt login successful and then you're going to click next online activity check you could do that test port so server is reachable test name resolution you check that enable connectivity you're going to click on this you can leave it disabled but this makes sure that 
your Pi uh, or Octoprint is able to ping itself to make sure. And then you could uh, set some sort of a um, watchdogs to make sure the Raspberry Pi reboots if it's not able to ping it. Um, and then click next, anonymous USB tracking. I usually disable it. Um, that's up to you if you want to disclose this data to Octopi uh, or Octoprint people. And then you're going to click next and um, enable blacklist processing. So this way you block the uh, blacklisted um, plugins. Then you click on next. And this is the area where you're going to basically set up your printer. So I have Ender 3 and model Ender 3 standard. If you got a pro, you could put whatever you want here. It doesn't matter. And then print bed volume, blah, blah, blah. If you have the custom version of Marlin, you could do 235, 235, 250. If you're using stock, then it's 225, 225, and 250. Um, this stays default this stays default you're going to click next and then you basically click finish and it's going to tell you you got some updates available you can hit updates and at this point the installation is complete for octopi um, uh, or octoprint i should say actually i don't know why i keep on saying octopi um, and you could connect your printer and hit connect and it should connect to the active print. And um, if you go in the settings, you could also install additional plugins, which is um, by clicking on get more plugins here. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you do like my videos, please hit like and subscribe to my channel for additional videos. My next video is more likely on the plugins uh, which plugins do I use? Uh, what are the beneficial plugins? And also, uh, I'm looking to get uh, a filament dryer. I have V1, and I'm going to uh, do a comparison in uh, Sunlu's filament dryer in version 1 and version 2. So be on the lookout. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.